What is going on everyone? My name's Boyd and I'm back with some more Age Mythology, the Titans action. Spawning on the left side of the map in the blue color playing as Odin. His name is Imperator LV. In the green color playing as Uranus is Musomeli. They are Team LV, their opponents today. In the red color playing as Hades is F2 player. And in the teal color playing as Thor is F2's gold line. And they are Rusty F2. Now this is a 2 vs 2 tournament hosted by DoD Shelty. Very exciting times. It's a random Civ tournament, which if you watch the 1v1 random Civ tournament, or was it a 2v2 again? Uh, yes, the 1v1 random Civ tournament. It really shook the game up a little bit because it meant that people had to had to play some gods they might not want to or might not normally play, but also meant that we saw some really cool matchups of the low tiers or the mid tiers. Or like mid tiers against high tiers or low tiers against high tiers and seeing players go at it in that regard and 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 kind of showing that the low tiers they're not actually that bad in the end of the day um and and, and yeah so the, this one is going to be a best of three there's a couple of funny rules in it which uh we may have to go over as the game goes on but we'll kind of stay away from too much of the rule set for the time being uh, hopefully you don't mind the old chatterbox thing in the uh, right hand corner not too in the way I just thought I'd chuck it in there just in case it might be something that people want to see uh, do go ahead and let me know if that's something you're interested in or you think I should get rid of it but it's going to be there for for now so Odin, Uranus, Hades, Thor what a matchup what a time to be alive now this this is different the tier list definitely changes in 2v2s. Thor definitely moves up a notch, or it's not Thor, but Norse in general, definitely moves up a notch in the team games because they get to utilize their speed. The maps are bigger, which means they don't get hit as early um, with anything too damaging. And they can kind of function and they can kind of do semi-fast tech strats and get a lot of pressure in there. Uh, and, and that's the thing. That's a thing. So definitely Norse is not a bad option in these team games. Greek as well. Um, for the most part, Greek is pretty good. Zeus is definitely a really strong team god because he gets access to centaurs, which are really, really strong. But then you move over onto Poseidon, who's the next best Greek god. Um, and, and, and he's quite strong because he has those cheap Hippocon. And you want to like get your spirit of charge and all of the good stuff also having access to ceasefire is really big because then you can um basically block something or steal a town center there's lots of really good stuff you can do with ceasefire in team games uh prevent like a 2v1 um something like that uh and and beyond that there's hades who sits at the bottom of the tier list for greek because he simply has no mobility however he does have a lot of utility in his god powers he has sentinels which is going to prevent some sort of early 2v1 on someone so say uh say like a chronos wanted to chronos rush out thor player over here could cast sentinels on top of the thor player's town center and then just be completely fine uh and on top of that he has athena which while not as good as ceasefire can definitely help out your partner in a fight and then going forward, if you get there, you get access to Underworld, which is a really big team game. God Power has some really huge um, swings in the game. So we'll see if that comes into play here for F2's player. We see the walls coming up and Athena's coming through. We've got Prometheus coming through for Musomeli. Imperator going through Freya and Goldline going through Freya. Now, Atlantean... Uh, on the other hand, is a, a completely different beast uh, in, in of itself because you get three different gods with three drastically different tiers. You have the Uranus, which is S tier because he has the mobility, he's got the utility, 
and he is just a beast to deal with. And Mr. Snell has got to be really happy to be uh, moving into the game with the Uranus here. And then you have Kronos, who uh, he, he works really well if partnered with the right gods. And we do see some action going on over here with the Imperator's Odin. He's got a relic here, boots of kick everything, forcing uh, Goldline back a little bit here. And then to finish the thought, we have Gaia, who um, it, it will work only works really well if it's a boomy game. And honestly, you're not going to find too many boomy games in these um, in these two v two tournaments because everyone knows that someone spawns in as Gaia, they're going to get picked on. Um, all that being said, Gaia does have some nice. Uh, options if she gets paired with like a Odin or a Thor because Freya in combination or Forest Fire in combination with Guy Forest can be really really strong. Got the uh the Valkyries are chasing around each other trying to get some harassing but probably not going to do too much and player opting for the early second town center and playing really defensively. Hopefully this means that Gold Lion recognizes that he's going to be really open to being doubled here. Uh, and when Musumeli sees this town center going up, which he has seen, he should just go, all right, I'm going to have to leave you now because you've got a really defensive position here. You've got back resources. You've got these hippo over here. So long as I can prevent you from coming forward and grabbing these ball, I can just move over and completely pile into gold line. And that's the uh, advantage of playing runners here is that move speed. So we'll see if he makes that decision there in order to go and double in response to the second town center of play. It's, uh, it's generally the right move. But actually what we've seen from Musumelius is actually canceling his military in favor of going for his own second town center or forward second town center, which is fine. Oh, actually, I don't know if he's done that. I, I thought I was watching a recorded game for half a second there, but um, not the case. So forest fire coming down over here, pushing these villages off. And it looks like Imperator is going at Go Gold Lion right now. Gonna actually lose an Ox Cart here if he's not careful. And it's looking like it will go down to the Valkyrie. So really nice play there from Imperator taking that Ox Cart down. These Raiders are coming out now. They are medium Raiders. And he's gonna be going medium Raiders into the Ulfsark Flood from Imperator, which it's going to be a dangerous thing because they've got Lone Wanderer. They go up to 5.28 speed versus the 6 speed of the medium Raider. So it's not that big of a difference. And beyond that, with the 30% hack armor, and I think they do an extra like... No, they don't do any bonus damage, but with the extra hack armor, they can they can basically... They, they do beat the Raiders fairly handedly. But we are going to be seeing some throwing action coming out. And I think these Raiders are going to be okay... Uh, against the old Sark if they have a couple of throwing axemen mixed in. So we'll see what happens here, but it's looking like Musumeli's getting his second town center up using his hero citizen for that one, so it goes up a little bit faster. Smart play there, but this is letting player do kind of whatever he wants. And if there's one thing I know about watching player in the past is if he gets to do whatever he wants, you're in for a... Uh, you're in for a rough time. And you can see his military buildings, his, his, his um, building placement is absolutely insane. The walls coming up everywhere, being really, really nicely placed. And now the tower going to be preventing Musumeli from getting in here. Maybe he can actually take this down, though, because you're trying to repair this. But by the time he takes this location down, or this wall down, I reckon the player's going to have some army out to defend here. Here. Well, maybe he won't actually, but there's nothing. Oh, there's some villagers over here that are going onto the, onto the crown crane, which is going to be a bit of a nuisance. Got some raiders coming in. If he spots this, which I'm not sure the gold lion has, yeah, he hasn't spotted it. But if he spotted that, it'll be a really big raid. See a second town center now coming down for Imperator LV. One of the big bonuses of going Ulfsark over going raiding cavalry is uh, that you can get these town centers up really fast. Whereas if Gold Lion wanted to, oh, I mean, he's got a lot of infantry units at the moment because of the throwing axemen, but if he wanted to get that town center up and not build, uh, a, 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 actually, if he wanted to get the town set up, he couldn't actually build the throwing axemen and then you only have these hearths to put it up, so it'd be really slow to get it up. Now, we're seeing the old slug making their way up to the top of the map, going to be looking for some raids. Looking like Musa Meli is doing some nice work on top of what players got here. The wall trying to come back up and maybe 
uh, preventing an escape path here or reinforcements. He's actually got a little bit of it up, but he dies really quickly here. And the army from player coming in going to be trying to fight off this Aranus onslaught, which he's going to be doing with the help of that watchtower. It is a Hades watchtower, so there's a little bit more damage than normal. So you've got to be super careful when you're running past them. We're going to have a couple of stray units here or there. We're trying to, but in doing so, he's going to be pulling the Ulfsark into the throwing axe, and they're going to be throwing their axes over here. But so long as the Ulfsark are moving, they're going to be dodging those axes. So you have to wait until your reigning cavalry are hitting the throwing the, the, the moving Ulfsark before you throw the axe in order to make them hit, because hitting a unit does make them slow down below the 5.5. 5 speed or 5.00 speed which you need to be hitting them now also going at this wooden wall maybe actually going to force the sentinels or something Billy just getting pulled from the line to rebuild this but he's actually already put his sentinels in his home base so i tell a lie there and the battle go power coming down from musumeli and the wall is gone but instantly gets rebuilt and this army from Musumeli going to have to get out of there. And player is starting to pull ahead right now. He's managed to get a lot of economy going here. He's still got pigs left here. The uh, the crown crane just about to be finished. But he's probably going to be able to transition into farms. And have no issues there. And now gold line is moving forward onto Imperator's base. He's going to be looking for some villagers here. But Imperator is still building those Ulfsark. Uh, and I do see he's got more coming in, but he's losing a lot of these units before the bulk of his army gets here. So this is a really good fight for Gold Lion, but Gold Lion's now kind of caught out and some ghost buildings trying to get down. Walls coming up, but not quite going to be enough. Got to be careful with those walls. Hey, here's a rule against wall segments here. So we gotta uh, we gotta watch that. <laughs> as long as it's not done in excess, I'm sure it'll be fine. But we do see the second town center is now up for Gold Lion. It's gonna be up to player to sort of carry Gold Lion here uh, for the most part in this game because Imperator has been able to get a small economic lead just because he's had the middle of the map on the hunt and also had the two town centers going. So his economy is gonna be skyrocketing ahead of gold line and the reverse is going to be happening for player against musa Melli. the shockwave comes down this is a really dangerous fight right now for imperator or sorry for musa Melli, imperator lp i'm getting them mixed up but that's that's totally fine player moving in and the raiders coming in going to be able to cut off these citizen here that's four citizen absolutely gigantic every single one of these will be falling here and scarred oh sorry gold line does hit the heroic edge through scardy here the ulfsar coming in to try and cut these guys off but four citizen deaths you can hear all the donkeys whining there as they do fall but now we're going to be seeing if Imperator LV can defend against this or not. We see Imperator coming through. Can use Chaos on this. And in fact, I would guarantee that happens as it does. Because there is a Minotaur here which is going to chase this army away. And behind all of this, Gold Lion's now got his third town center up. We do see some raids coming in. There's been a transport ship with a dock in order to hit this location here. With only 10 Ulfsark though, he's might, maybe not going to be able to do all too much, but the army from Gold Line going to be coming over here. Down center trying to get up for player, and I think he can fight this maybe. Is he going to the, the Heroic Age yet? Yeah, Aphrodite's coming through. It's 30% though, so it's not going to be available for this fight. And the Minotaur still coming in, but decides to refocus onto one of Green's units there. As Green's now going to have to retreat. The Hoplite Hippocon army is just super strong. You can't really fight it as a run. You have to play around the fact that it's kind of stronger than you. Uh, and now these old Saka, they're leaving this location. I would have thought they might have ran to the corner or into the transport ship and come back a little bit later. But looking for some more raids. But what's going to happen with these old Sark is they're not going to get anything and they're probably going to lose their lives. And we do see Scardi has been hit there for Imperator LV as his third town center is coming up. So that's totally fine for him. Um, and here we go. Third town center now for F2 player. He can actually eye this town center down as well if he wants or simply just go straight to the Mythic Age. 
Uh, and I wouldn't be surprised if Hecate's incoming for Musumeli, which it is. But what I am surprised by is how fast Gold Lion's gotten to the Mythic Gates here through Baldur. He's already hit advance here. And he's going to be eyeing that down. And I don't think that uh, Gold Lion's... Sorry, Imperator LV is... He's not that far behind, actually. So you have to kind of sacrifice these Raiders in a cost-effective way. Get some value out of it. And then be spamming out throwing Axemen here and get your uh, get your upgrades for throwing Axemen because you will be fighting against a Ragnarok coming in fairly soon. There's the Baldur. It is approximately, uh, uh, what is that, 45 seconds behind. We do see the F2 player sitting in the uh, Heroic Age for a little bit longer than I would have liked. He's getting the heavy Hoplite out, maybe just to secure this location or something like that. I don't know. I don't know. But we do have Copper Weapons Thor coming through. I don't mind they're called Copper Weapons Thor. So they're just Copper Weapons. But maybe because they're a little bit cheaper. I guess. Anyways. The Armor of Achilles comes in for Musumeli. Frost comes down. Imperator LV. His town center is looking mildly close to death here, which is going to be a really big thing for when the... Uh, when the Balder hits, because then he can just move in and just dice this up and it's gonna be a town center for him. We do see the Tartar Angle Power getting used in the base of F2 player, but he's gonna have all of these Hoplite already here. And while they're not Zeus Hoplite, they're not dealing double damage to this building. They are still heavy Hoplite and they take a long time for them to die against these Tartarian spawns. They will be able to deal with that one. We see a curse coming down to slow the push down in this position with the fortress and the town center with masons coming through easily going to defend against this one. And we do see uh, Gold Lion stealing this town center while this is all going down. And uh, it's looking like Gold Lion is not ready to use um, his is Balder and Parada hits the Mythic Age through Balder there and he's going to hit an instant Ragnarok. He's only got couple weapons, whereas Gold Lion's going to be holding off. He does not have to use it just yet. He just wants to defend a little bit, wait as long as he can, get as many upgrades as he possibly can. We do see slightly better upgrades for our Thor player than our Odin player, but it shouldn't matter too much. I feel like this is just going to be a straight trade of Ragnaroks at some point. Hopefully, we'll see. Um, there are more throwing axemen here for Gold Lion, so he does have the advantage in the Ragnarok fight. But F2 player hits the Mythic Age through Artemis now. So we'll see what he can do. And he's going to move forward a little bit now. It's looking like the army of Musumeli and, uh, and Imperator LV looking for like they're aiming down at this town center here. And Goldmine maybe holding off a little bit too long on this Ragnarok, trying to get out some trade caravans or something in order to make sure he has a little bit of economy afterwards. But Imperator LV, he's going to be... I, I don't know if going after the Hades player is the right idea with this Ragnarok, because it, uh, it, these are really strong buildings. He's only got Masons, but he has fortified Town Centers. They're dealing 20.4 damage a second, both of them. So... Uh, it's a lot of lost units, or a lot more lost units than you would lose otherwise. Now here we go. Musumeli. Musumeli compares to his green start cow, please. As the Ragnarok is slowly but surely starting to dwindle. We do see 205 population left for Imperator LV and Gold Line on the other hand sitting at his 145 or 145. Still pumping out units. Still just coming over and trying to pick these guys off. Gold Line's got so many throwing axemen here but he's kind of trading them against the heavy Arcus instead of against these Hero of Ragnaroks. He also has a lot of idle uh, heroes here. What you really have to do with those Ragnarok heroes is when you class Ragnarok is click the idle military banner with shift. That will select 30 of them and you just do that until you have no more left as the idea. And we still see more units getting pumped out. This town center is still very, very low. So it could be an idea to just go at it with some frost giants or something maybe to be able to take it down but now player moving backwards um he knows that he's got a he knows that he's got a ragnarok to save him here and he's also got an earthquake which he hasn't used just yet 
I wonder if earthquake in this town center or something would be a, not a bad idea. We do see the earthquake coming down onto Musumeli's base here. It's going to kill off the palace and kill off the town center. Musumeli sitting at 152 population. So if he loses any units during this, it's going to be a little bit better for him. But now it's two town centers apiece for these two players. But player's going to be down two town centers or down one town center for a little bit longer. But gold line now coming in has cast... His own Ragnarok here, he's sitting at 302 population. Imperator LV is sitting at 116 population. And that's definitely hurting as the rest of these units are falling in. Imperator's got 88 gold in the bank. He's got no farms. And he's got one villager out at the moment gathering from resources. He's got a couple, maybe like one ox caravan it's looking like. Two ox caravan, three, four, five ox caravan. So he's got a really small amount of resources left, but Musumeli could feed him a little bit, but I don't see it happening considering how far behind he is on the economy. And, and how we've got all of these gold lion rag heroes moving into the base of Musumeli, just completely ignoring Imperator LV. I think you should at least send like 30 rag heroes or 20 rag heroes and kill this town center because you also kill off those stray fire giant that are sitting here for Imperator LV uh, so that would be a thing but this is a really nice building placement right here for Musumeli as he's spamming down watchtowers and we do see gold lines just like that's cool you can build all the watchtowers you want all the arcus you want you're not going to be able to push back here I'm just going to go over and kill your ally and, and take that location there uh, player can just take this town center or, or gold line can probably put a fair amount of resources in the bank just need some food there uh, players probably sitting on a bunch of resources in the bank yeah, he could tribute some food over to grab that town center if he really wanted to now the uh, town center of Imperator is going down and the rest of these rag heroes are making their way and going to be cutting off the trade route maybe picking off some citizens over here grabbing from the gold mine as that citizen's trying to run away the walls up as these heroes are going to be eyeing down this town center. Musumeli does cast his uh, shockwave there. As the units from player are sort of moving into these Arcus. And while these Toxodes are a lot stronger than the Arcus, there's just not that many of them. And for some reason, we're seeing Hapaspis getting built when there's an Archer Ball. You really don't want to build Hapaspis unless your opponent's making like predominantly infantry. Because otherwise, they just die. You can see they've got, uh, what is it? They've only got 18% pierce armor, so these Arcus just completely destroy them. And now we've got the Rag Heroes coming in. I'm going to take down Imperator LV's town center here. And Imperator LV is going to tap out, it looks like, this type of the GG. And I don't think that Team LV is going to be able to hang on here as Musumeli also taps out. GG, well played by uh, F2 or Rusty F2 there. Uh, really nice play. Um, don't know what else to say. GG, GG. Uh, I think the, the choice of Rag and running at the Hades player was really not ideal. Could have you could have ignored this portion here and just ran at gold lines base force player to come over and help defend and then the buildings fall a little bit easier as you push through you lose less rag here do more damage force out the rag earlier for gold line and then you trade rag for rag You're still kind of in a bad position because players so far ahead anyways we'll move on to game number two thanks for hanging out with me we'll get that next game going real